Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, May 8th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Tonight, a homeschooling family has their children seized by the state. Then, is there such a thing as a moderate rebel? And a World War II veteran's take on modern America. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Triggers will be flipped in your mind, in your gut, in your soul, and you will then see the mission laid out for you in God's plan specific to you. If you really wanna know what Jade Helm is all about and the meaning behind mastering the human domain, rounding up dissidents, just take a look at who they're actually targeting. Now, they're gonna tell you that though they're just targeting those who they consider anomalies people who don't really fit into this equation. They'll tell you that their Skynet program, yes, they actually have a surveillance program called Skynet. And they're gonna tell you that it's just about, you know, following the online communications of potential terrorists. They say they use that phone metadata to track the location and call activities of suspected terrorists to detect any suspicious patterns of these terrorists. They say they're not gonna use your Facebook posts against you, well, not if you're an ISIS sympathizer, that is. Just take a look at what happened in Garland, Texas. Now the FBI director is coming out, he's saying hundreds, if not thousands of ISIS sympathizers across the country, they're trying to be recruited uh, from the terrorist group. Uh, they're also saying ISIS is giving these people directives to attack the United States, leveraging social media to direct these messages to disturbed people. Um, James Comey said, it's like the devil is sitting on their shoulders saying, kill, 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 which is obviously really ironic considering it's the FBI who has been caught time and time again setting up mentally unstable patsies to pull off their false flag attacks. Um, but the point here is that the FBI is admitting Elton Simpson, one of the shooters, was long known to federal authorities. He'd been under surveillance for some time. And the FBI is now admitting that they sent a bulletin to local police warning them hours in advance about Simpson possibly wanting to come to this event. Um, but instead of actually, you know, I don't know, setting up an FBI presence there and following through on this lead, the FBI, they don't do anything. They just take a step back and once again, a terror attack is allowed to take place. So here, they're, why are they doing all this monitoring of social media? What are they even doing? They're just saying, oh, he's a potential terrorist. He's a potential terrorist. He might go out and, and follow through with an attack there in Texas, but we're not gonna do anything about it. No, instead, authorities are targeting Americans with traditional rural lifestyles. These are the anomalies. These are the terrorists, according to the state. Uh, here's a headline up at InfoWars today, and every single American should be infuriated about this. Police seize 10 children from off-grid homeschool family. This happened Wednesday in Kentucky, and this was after receiving an anonymous tip. Oh, see something, say something. Sheriff's officers set up a blockade around Joe and Nicole Nogler's rural property before they entered the premises. Now, eight of the kids were out with their father, but Nicole and two of her oldest children were at home. She attempted to drive away to avoid having her children be taken by police. She was subsequently stopped and then arrested for resisting. The sheriff then demanded that the father turn over the other eight children by 10 a.m. the next day or face felony charges. And this is an order with which he complied. So what was their crime? Uh, basically living off the grid, showing people via their Facebook posts how they were this happy family. They considered themselves bliss, this blessed and blissful family living off range on their some 30 acres of land, uh, homeschooling their children. So that is terrorist act here in the United States of America. You can't post pictures of your very happy family and your kids and your off-grid lifestyle and let America know that it's possible to have a really happy, healthy family that isn't dependent on the state. That is terrorist activity. So these are people they're not crazy. This is how people in America used to live. They used to live off the land. They used to be homeschooled. But now some of their snitch neighbors or fellow Americans are now thinking that people like this are terrorists, that they're not receiving a proper education because they're not getting an education by the state. 
when nine times out of 10, you'll talk to some of these homeschool kids and they're much more intelligent than your average eight, 10, 10, 12 year old that's out there who's just absorbed with technology all day long and wants to play their video games and everything. These children, a lot of times, are a, a lot more intelligent and they know a lot more about what's going on and they're in tune with nature. Uh, you know, it's just, they think that these children aren't receiving a proper education because they don't know how to take these standardized tests and they're not being trained to take these standardized tests. So those are terrorists. Well, look at some other terrorists that are being targeted uh, by Homeland Security. Vegan potluck terrorists. That's right. This was a Facebook event page created by an animal rights activist group last September, and it was being monitored by a Texas counterterrorism unit. Um, one of the specialists there with the Texas Department of Public Safety alerted fellow employees to the National Weekend of Action shortly after discovering the page. And this group was hosted by the Institute for Critical Animal Studies. The event's description called for activists to set up film viewings, workshops, protests, and vegan potlucks to educate the public about federal laws that specifically target animal advocates. And boom, there you go. That's what it's about, educating the public on these federal laws and probably ways that they can protect themselves from being targeted by the Fed. So of course, educating the public, terrorists. Now, the thing that really infuriates me is that we are being told by the mainstream media that we are not allowed to offend radical Islam with cartoons, yet we have families who are raising happy, healthy children with their own religious beliefs, and that, that is okay. We can, we can offend those people. We can steal their children, kidnap their children away from them, and separate them, throw them in foster care, give them up to the state, because I'm sure that's gonna be a much better existence for them there, that those are the people that we're allowed to target. We're allowed to offend those people and we should be offended by Americans and a, and a rural lifestyle. Now, th that's what I'm going back to. That's what you have to look at and see about what Jade Helm is all about. Why are they targeting Americans? Why are they targeting dissidents? It's the people who will not blindly follow the state. Who are the anomalies? These are the people who are the anomalies that aren't gonna just go along to get along, do whatever the state says. Oh, let's not offend radical Islam, even though they're beheading Christians and raping little girls and forcing them to remarry different ISIS soldiers again and again and again. No, let's not offend them. Let's, they're just pillars of society. You know, They're not even gonna take down ISIS Twitter accounts, but they're gonna go after a family who posts these off-grid photos and vegan potlucks. I mean, that's what's so messed up. Now, this, is, this method of detecting suspicious patterns is something that they can only do if they scoop up massive amounts of data so they are able to determine what is normal. Now, David Knight and Rob Dew explained this process yesterday and how it ties to Jade Helm, how we've got them and we know that this is about America. It's not about training overseas. And there's a video posted up in full on Infowars.com about the military industrial complex seeking to overlay a human geological map onto a physical geological map to track individuals. So they'll be able to find those areas where they have those anomalies, those families who aren't just gonna willingly and blindly follow the state. They wanna be able to, to track those individuals, track the people who respond to certain articles, the people who uh, pass out flyers and show up to protest. They wanna see what areas are going to be easier to take over, what, what are the really truly hostile areas, what are the permissive areas, and so they're building this whole entire database that they can then overlay over a physical geological map and you know be better prepared. That's what Jade Helm is all about. Now, uh, Rob Dew and David Knight joined Alex Jones on the Alex Jones show, show today and they did an extended uh, overdrive, breaking this down even further um, so definitely go to Infowars.com or the Alex Jones YouTube channel for the full entire hour of them breaking this down in depth. But here is a clip. This is the accelerated rollout ahead of economic collapse. And they know when one in 10 has autism, when people are all dying of cancer, there's going to be civil unrest. People are going to say no. When nobody has money to prep. And the military is going to come and just take you away because sure. you're a terrorist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like and, they practiced in Fort Lauderdale just the other day. They were putting people yeah. in white vans and driving them off. But but, but this is confirming because, you know, starting with you about 20 minutes ago through now, will be the first video we put up on YouTube today. 
This is just the first salvo. Y uh, yes. Jade, uh, you know, proof. Jade Helm is for domestic takeover. But we need to add the proviso, not the takeover itself, the training for the takeover. It's an exercise yeah. in the takeover is what it is. You were trying to talk for a to break, David. Uh, tell us, preview what's coming up with you in the next hour with uh, Rob Dew. Well, what we need to do, Alex, is we need to break down so that people really understand that this is, they just don't put these words up at random. When they say mastering the human domain, when they talk about it being unconventional warfare, when I talked to the ABC reporter, she had already written a story on uh, Jade Helm. She says, well, it's realistic, but it's unconventional. I said, no, unconventional warfare is a very specific term. It is a psyop uh, first and foremost, uh, but mastering the human domain is a very specific term of art of the Department of Defense. So we're gonna tell people what the human domain is, why it's significant about this mapping that we see in it. Of course, that is just the tip of the iceberg. That is a very coarse uh, map that it's people like are saying jujitsu is a art form of martial arts or taekwondo. We have these terms. You go look them up. It's giant, huge meetings for domestic takeover. That's on the logo. Fits in with quote blending in, doing things that look illegal. Yes. Uh, I mean this. That's why they're freaking out so bad. Is this is domestic? We we gave them the benefit of the doubt. We looked into it. They've been caught lying. It's a giant domestic takeover. This is folding in Drill. the in, in, intel that they're getting from the surveillance state. This is folding it into these military operations. When we look at dragnet surveillance, eventually, if we don't stop this, it is going to come to the point where they drag you out in the middle of the night like we just saw in Fort Lauderdale, just as they've been authorized to do. That's what they're going to the do NDAA. when you don't vaccinate or you homeschool. Exactly. They're already doing a low-intensity rounding folks up. It's going to intensify. Well, and notice how that family, they put something out on Facebook. It went into the cloud. The cloud analyzed it and said, threat, threat matrix. We got to send somebody out after them. The orders come into the CPS. They go take the kids away. Yeah. That's how yeah, they, that's how it's going to work. And, and, and I'm about overtly fighting this and saying it's morally wrong, corrupt, and evil. But people can also choose the other route, use Facebook and Twitter for disinformation. Mm -hmm. And I think yes. it's patriotic duties. It's time. This is very sophisticated, folks. You got to be careful. But it's time to start pumping it with disinfo. Not lies about media events and things, but your own homestead, your own house, what you're doing. I would say use it, but only use it to create a false image. Yeah. There you go. The only way to defeat something like this is to pump it full of disinfo. Yeah. So then there's so much, it overloads the system. Um, I mean, we're going to go through the whole thing. There's another aspect of this uh, from that C-SPAN interview, which I kind of glossed over, and I got, I got called out on it by, why didn't you cover the robot section? There's a whole... Part where the guy talks about they have autonomous robots walking around as soldiers and civilians and Rob, at that asymmetrical Fort AP Hill Center. I think that yeah, just they're training for the robots mind. to come yeah. after us. That's yeah. the headline: AP yeah. Hill training robots to fight. Yeah. I mean, it, it's on. Listen, they're announcing China plans to get rid of within five years ninety percent of its workers. Yeah, with and, robots. And, and here's the thing: I mean, it's but, on, folks. It's it, on. They're, I mean, it's their plan. God, when they ask him about Jade Helm, I, I, Alex, when they ask him about Jade Helm, and he glances off and he goes and he nods and he goes, I don't know anything about that. And now he's got to come up with something yeah. to talk they about. They were doing so that he at goes into his, yeah. he, he kind of unconsciously goes and it's like, oh, well, we've got uh, autonomous got robots. robots. Yeah, so it's around. like, let's let's change the subject over here to something interesting. That's the thing that's first and foremost on his mind. They did that like a hundred times, Jakari was telling me, and Biggs, that to say anything, the lieutenant colonel would look back at the private corporation. And they're the ones that give the money to the government to lobby. They're now in control of the military. Mm -hmm. So we're fighting for the future of the military. Hey. Chuck Norris is on our side. You guys are in trouble. We can't lose. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. The Republic is rising. The Sleeping Giant is rising. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorous 
salicylic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today, and for a limited time, use the promo code WATER20 and get 20% off all ProPure products. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com, or give our crew a call at 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. The government claims it is training vetted moderates to fight ISIS. The definition of moderate is kept or keeping within reasonable or proper limits, not extreme, excessive, or intense. Flat out, we do not have a Census Bureau door-to-door -door -door survey fidelity on these groups. I wish we did, but we don't. Uh, there are, by one estimate uh, rendered last year, some 1,600 of these opposition groups. So de determining their size and capability and, importantly, their ideological or political leanings is very, very, very difficult. About 400 U.S. troops and potentially hundreds of additional military personnel will deploy to Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar to help train vetted moderate Syrian rebels, train and equip them. This has been the next step in the program. Moderate rebels are virtually non-existent in Syria and have been for some time. The Free Syrian Army and the Syrian National Council, the vaunted bulwarks of the moderate opposition, only really exist in hotel lobbies and the minds of Western diplomats, writes Ben Reynolds. An earlier CIA program to arm groups opposed to the governments of Bashar al-Assad in Syria, in effect, armed al-Nusra and other jihadist groups. The Obama administration approved a program in the spring of 2013 that delivered support to those then considered moderate rebels all of whom fought under the umbrella known as the Free Syrian Army, the main opposition group fighting Assad after the Syrian civil war began in 2011. The CIA program allowed for the transfer of US-made weapons via Turkey, and it was partially funded by Saudi Arabia and other wealthy Sunni states. But the rebel groups that were beneficiaries of that aid began to dissolve when better financed and organized militias such as the Islamic State group and the Nusra Front emerged. The U.S. is well aware it is training and arming jihadist groups in Syria, including ISIS. The latter group was trained in Jordan by the U.S. military. It defies common sense that the administration would somehow be unaware that the moderate opposition exists in name only. Contrary to popular belief, the United States does not stumble blindly and hopelessly through the Middle East. It stands to reason that there is an important motive behind choosing to back the non-ISIS Syrian opposition, rather than tacitly supporting the Assad regime to counter ISIS. As Tony Cartolucci notes, there never were any moderates, and the United States and its allies, precisely as renowned journalist Seymour Hersh warned in 2007, went about raising a regional army of sectarian terrorists to fight an unprecedented proxy war with the predictable outcome being an orgy of genocide and atrocities. ISIS is the purposeful creation of the United States in its pursuit of regional hegemony in the Middle East and ISIS atrocities. And ISIS atrocities were predicted long before the first shots were fired in 2011 in the Syrian conflict, long before the term Islamic State went mainstream. The latest propaganda effort by the Pentagon designed to give the impression the U.S. is arming and training vetted moderates to fight ISIS is simply cover for the real purpose of a new influx of arms and trainers in the Middle East to hasten the overthrow of al-Assad 
and convert Syria into the next failed state on par with Libya where ISIS has taken up residence. The ultimate goal by the global elites is to realize order through chaos, and as the arch-globalist Zbigniew Brzezinski said, prevent collusion and maintain security dependence among the vassals. John Bound for Infowars.com My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. When it comes to you and your family's health, InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Today marks the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II in Europe. May 8th is celebrated as the day when German troops throughout Europe finally laid down their arms. 16 million Americans served in World War II, and more than 400,000 lives were sacrificed in the name of freedom. Now, they're hailed as the greatest generation, so we spoke to the oldest living World War II veteran. He lives right here in Austin, Texas. Richard Overton is going to be turning 109 years old on Monday. And we went out and we spoke with him. He's a really sweet man, and he offered up some tips for longevity as well as... Uh, his hopes and wishes for present day America. 109. 109. Trying to make run on 10. <laughs> I think I'll make it. Yeah. I hope. So do you think the world is better now or back then? Oh, the world is a lot better, but, but, but it's, some things are getting a little different. People are getting a little stronger. Get a little meaner. Please continue to move your vehicles or your homes. They're shooting the police and they're killing each other and they think having fires every night. And now that didn't happen when I was in the country. That, that wasn't happening, but none of it happening. Well, what about during the civil rights era? Uh, were you were you involved in that at all? And how was that here? Well, back in the old days, a lot of us couldn't meet with each other. But only way a lot of them got together is when war started. That changed the situation. Changed a lot of them. Cause when you were left here and go to the army over the water, fighting for this country. 
Well, you got to get together. You couldn't separate. But just think, all the soldiers that Uncle Sam had, and how in the world did I can get to be the oldest? <laughs> I can't believe that. Some, it's, now, some didn't do man didn't do it, did he? I don't think so. <laughs> Sometimes I stop and look back and say, what in the world behind me? Like, see what pushed me. She, she, she would kept me going. <laughs> well, I, I read somewhere that you like coffee with whiskey in it. It's, it's good medicine. That's what I'm taking it for. Me, my daddy taught me how to do that. So, what do you think about the Second Amendment? Do you think that's important for us nowadays, or do you think we should do away with the right to bear arms? No, I think everything getting something. It was better here for a while, but it seemed like it's kind of changing a little bit. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I don't know whether, I mean, it's the people changing. I don't guess God would change it. He don't go the bad way; he go the good way. But some of these things are getting pretty bad in places. And a lot of people coming over here and you don't even know them. And they, like here a few days ago, some fella stopped out there with his hat down and wouldn't let me see him. And some fella stopped up there working on his car on the dash and wouldn't let me see him. Every time I look at them, they would drop their head. And there were some people that didn't belong here, but they, was, they found out that I've been in this situation for some time, and they know I live by myself. And so they think I got some money. I kept looking at him, looking at him. Every time I look at this stuff, yeah, he'll die down on this car. I look back there, he put, there's, there's no way in the car, he put his hat down. So I said, oh, well, I ain't gonna worry me, I just got up and come in and got my gun. <laughs> but I'm on the porch, he said, I said, now y'all just keep, keep, do whatever you wanna do. <laughs> Then I called, well, I had called the police long, I called them several times out here and tell them what I got to do because people are getting funny. He said, I know it. He said, people are getting kind of funny. He said, the way to do it is, one, come on your steps out, out there on your walk. Well, if he come up to your walk and you want to say something to you, you can talk to him. But if you want to come up on your steps and you don't know him, you tell him to wait. So you can't come no further, I don't know, you can't get close to me. See, some of them get close to me and grab you. See, and some of them stronger than you are. Mm -hmm. And so you don't take that chance. He said, if they come on the step, if you want to kill them, be sure you kill them, because they'll come back and kill you if you don't. Do you think the world is, is more free now? Yes, yeah, well, it's getting, it's, the world's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better because th well, things is, now, some year things go up and then, some year things go down, so mm -hmm. you just got to live through what's coming. Well, before we go, is there anything you want to say to the veterans, to the young veterans, or to the young people out there? You've got a lot of wisdom, so. Yes, and you tell them I'm still, I'm still one, I'm still their friends. And they want me to go back to Washington. I been, didn't want to go, but. They want me to go back again, talk to the president, so I go back and see what's going on, but I want everything to be lovely. I don't want nothing to be <laughs> crossed up where I don't yes. like. Well, what do you, I mean, how does that make you feel, being the oldest living World War II veteran? I just can't believe it. I, can, I, I can't feel it. I just can't believe it. But it, see, man ain't got to do with it. You got to go up and ask God about that situation. Yeah. I don't know how long I'm gonna live. I'll have to live five more years. I'll have to, to die tomorrow. But man ain't got no thing about it till I'm dead <laughs> and gone. But God got to know when you die. He know when you're leaving and know when you come. Mm -hmm. And so that's the man you better watch. Yeah. And thank and thank Him for giving you that. <laughs> All a good life, and I had a good life. Well, thank you for tuning in to the show tonight. Be sure to stick around for an in-depth report from John Bowne. Find out what would Mark Twain think if he were alive to see what America has become today. And if you are watching us on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and become a subscriber to the Alex Jones channel. And head over to prisonplanet.tv where if you get a subscription there, you can access instantly over 18 years worth of content that you're not going to find on YouTube, 
and you can always share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time. I see a lot of people tweeting out their name and password on Twitter and sharing it with all their friends and fans. You can do the same thing. Thanks for watching us tonight. We'll see you here Monday, 7 p.m. Central. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com Oil of Oregano Formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market. Sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139《It was the great American humorist Mark Twain who said, Loyalty to the country always, loyalty to the government when it deserves it. If Mark Twain were alive today, I think he would quickly conclude that loyalty to our government lost its due right after 9-11. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm so glad uh, that you could join us today for this Wednesday, July 25th, 2001 broadcast. Tyranny is enveloping the globe, and the United States is a shining jewel the globalists want to bring down, and they will use terrorism as the pretext to get it done. Look, we've seen the news stories that you've wanted to blow things up, that you have blown things up, and that you're saying that four million of us are going to die and we need martial law and the Associated Press at one of your little drills you had, and that we're aware of who the terrorists are if you pull this. This can stop this Hitlerian Reichstag event. I want to put the toll-free number up for Congress. And I won't want you to believe Alex Jones. I want you to go get these news stories off my website. I want you to call these major newspapers. I want you to find out these statements were true by the White House about preparing for martial law. And I want you to let them know that if there is any terrorism, we know who to blame. We have a Congress that has an approval rating that is no longer detectable by current technology. A growing public awareness that the war of drugs has been manufactured by the CIA and organized by the DEA. If you want to collect content on the American, then a court order is issued. They are not, the National Security Agency is not listening to Americans' phone calls, and it is not reading Americans' emails. None of these programs allow that. As a matter of fact, the Patriot Act and that part of that 702 says it is expressly prohibited by law that you can read and, and, and wholly uh, surveil domestic uh, email traffic in the United States. Because even if you're not doing anything wrong, you're being watched and recorded. And the, the storage capability of these systems increases every year consistently by orders of magnitude. You simply have to eventually fall under suspicion from somebody, even by a wrong call. And then they can use the system to go back in time and scrutinize every decision you've ever made and attack you on that basis to sort of derive suspicion from an innocent life and paint anyone in the context of a wrongdoer. Government law enforcement, namely the FBI, NSA, DHS, and TSA, illegally read our correspondences and listen to our communications while sexually fondling our families, all in the name of national security, which pitifully adds up to national insecurity. We have a military that is exponentially raping female soldiers, wives of soldiers, and any female unfortunate enough to live near a military base. View. I don't know how you can say that having 19,000 sexual assaults and rapes a year is discipline and order. I do not understand how you can say that of those 19,000 cases, to only have approximately 2,400 even reported because the victims tell us that they are afraid to report because of retaliation and the blame they will get and the scorn they will get from their colleagues is order and discipline. And I really cannot understand how 2,400 cases, only 240 of which go to trial, can be result in you believing that that authority is giving you discipline. Uh, there, there is something that 
that seems odd about the uh, the power to uh, uh, to reject findings that came out of a uh, of a jury in the absence of of some major obvious problem. Meanwhile, the quiet rollout of Bill Clinton's 1033 program, mushrooming into the NDAA, has been building the militarized police force Goliath, while genuine usurpers beat down a path to the highest branches of our government. But I welcome this kind of examination, because people have got to know whether or not their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea. A new world order. The problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international the beginning, order. The beginning. We have confidence because freedom is the permanent hope of mankind. The hunger in dark places, the longing of the soul. When our founders declared a new order of the ages, when soldiers died in wave upon wave for a union based on liberty. When citizens marched in peaceful outrage under the banner Freedom Now. They were acting on an ancient hope that is meant to be fulfilled. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. And instead, it looks like we got a lot of disorder. The international order that we have worked for generations to build. Ordinary men and women are too small-minded to govern their own affairs. That order and progress can only come when individuals surrender their rights to an all-powerful sovereign. Fortunately for Mark Twain, he died just three years before the bankers finally got their hands on our economy and Banker Pawn and U.S. President Woodrow Wilson oversaw the ratification of the 16th Amendment to the United States Constitution. I'm sure the obscenity of its declaration would not have been lost on Mr. Twain. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived without apportionment among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. The resulting Internal Revenue Service became so bloated with hubris after 102 years that it now gives promotions to IRS employees that cheat on their own taxes. In approximately 60% of the willful violations, the IRS managers refuse to fire the guilty employees, and the directors of the Internal Revenue Service target patriotic Americans now, as if they were the enemy. And if Mark Twain were alive today, well, I would be ashamed to explain to him the abject putrefaction that wafts through the halls of the Environmental Protection Agency. I would ask him to please cover his ears while I explain to the rest of America that EPA employees are regularly reprimanded for defecating in the hallways of the Denver, Colorado regional office, and that the watching of pornography on government computers during work time at the EPA has become so commonplace that EPA employees have been caught watching hours of porn, harassed the female employees, and were then promoted. It says 2010. When, when did uh, we discover that he's? Uh, when did we discover he's looking at the porno? I believe the information came to us within the last what, last six months. No, the last six months, and we gained the info. We acquired that information. Uh, but something needs to be changed when people are breaking the law, when you have this GSA 14 uh, <laughs> sitting there abusing his position, his salary, uh, ripping off the taxpayers. Somebody told me he's still on, on the payroll. Is he on the payroll, Mr. Yes, Warren? he is. Uh, th this is so uh, offensive, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. I guess I'm thankful that Mr. Twain isn't alive to see all this, knowing that there was a time when America wasn't a shell of its former providence and glory. As dismal as it may seem, Mr. Twain wouldn't want you to forget America when he said, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. John Bound for Infowars.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.